morning everyone. Uh, it's day two of lockdown here, Saturday morning, nice and quiet. Not a lawnmower, leaf blower or weed eater to be heard. Um, I'm in my weekend clothes in the studio and trying to just relax and enjoy things. We've got a vlog to get out to you, hopefully early next week, so it's my turn to uh, record something for you. And today I thought I'd just explain a little bit more about stitch regulators. Our machines have excellent stitch regulation on them, um, but there are limitations. The same as everything, um, you have to work within the, the capabilities of that piece of equipment. So just to explain, stitch regulation is, um, you can choose how many stitches per inch you would like your machine to um, produce for you. So with most of our machines you can now have basting stitches as well, but it goes from about 4 stitches per inch, so a quarter inch length stitch, anything up to about 24 stitches depending on which of the machines you've got. 24 stitches per inch is a lot, you don't want to ever pick those out. For me, I tend to work around the 10 to 12 uh, stitches per inch, sometimes 13, 14, depending on what I'm quilting. If I'm quilting very small designs, then I want to have a smaller stitch. Um, bigger flowing designs, you can go with a, a larger stitch. What you do need to remember is, this is just a machine. Just because you have a stitch regulator, doesn't mean that you can stitch at 1000 miles an hour. It is there to assist you to keep your stitches even, but you must remember that you also have to stay within its limitations. If you go too fast, it will reach an overstitch mode or an overspeed mode where it actually can't keep up with you anymore. And you'll see that the stitches become longer than you've asked it to regulate for you. Um, most of the machines, if you look under the tools section, you'll see that there is a little bell that gives you, or maybe it's under the, you see now I don't even know, it's under the settings. Uh, it has a bell at the bottom which is oh, your different alarms and one of those has like a, a speedometer kind of symbol. That is your over speed alarm. So if you have that selected, it means if you go too fast for your stitch regulator, it's actually going to beep at you and it's going to say, whoa, slow down, you're going too fast. So remember, controlled, smooth movements are going to give you the best results. Um, we also have two different modes of stitch regulation. One is called precision, and that means that once you, if you select that mode and you start you press start on the machine. Nothing is going to happen until you actually begin to move. So it um, is great for ruler work and if you're a beginner uh, you just need to remember that you, when you stop the machine the needle can stop in any position. It could stop at the top, it could stop in the fabric. And if you're moving your hands around the needle whilst that machine is still active, if you bump the, bump the machine uh, it's going to stitch. So you do need to be a little bit careful of those fingers. Um, we don't need anyone stitching into themselves. But it's a good way to get used to, to the stitch regulation. The second mode is cruise. So this is like a combination of your manual stitching where the needle just goes at a set speed and the um, stitch regulation where the machine handles your stitch length for you. So in cruise you can set uh, either a percentage on some of the older machines or now on the new generation machines you actually set, uh, set uh, stitches per minute. So the uh, default is about 50 stitches per minute or 3% on the older machines uh, but you can set it at whatever level you like. So what it means is when you press start, the needle is going to begin to cycle. It's going to start to stitch. And the minute you then move the machine, the stitch regulator kicks in. So you end up with a smoother start. Um, and it also means if you come into a point, if you pause just for a second, not even a second, just very, very briefly, it's actually going to make a stitch even though you're not moving because that needle is in any case moving up and down and it kind of tacks your point without making a visible knot. It makes a, a little tack so that it doesn't pull your bobbin thread through to the top. 
Personally, I love the cruise mode. It's what I use all the time. Uh, I find it smoother. Um, and remember when you are pausing, even if you pause, the machine is still stitching for you. So it reminds you that it is still active. Um, I'm very much a stop start person. Uh, I have my thumb all the time over the stop and start button. So if I want to move my hands, if I'm using a ruler, um, or I need to move my feet if I'm starting to stitch away from myself, then I actually just stop, know that the machine is safe, I can carry, I can move, I can adjust, do what I need to do, and then start again. You don't have to leave it running all the time. So just remember, stitch regulation, if you're in cruise mode, if you stitch too slowly, then you're going to end up with smaller stitches than you've selected because the needle is still cycling even if you're not moving that much. If you are in precision mode or any of the modes actually and you go too fast it goes into the overspeed mode where the, the, um, it can't keep up with the speed that you're going. If you've got your alarm on it's going to beep at you. If you don't what you'll see is that your stitches just are longer than you've asked it uh, the machine to be. So I hope that helps you a little bit. Um, stitch regulation is a wonderful thing. Um, you just need to understand there are limitations to it. Happy sewing! Hi quilter friends! Today I'm going to tell you about the quilt polish that we have. Um, some of you might have seen it before but I want to just introduce you to this really really nice product. Um, it's from a company called So Steady. Um, you can also find information on the website called SoVerySmooth.com, and you'll see my mine is quite used up already. But I have the link for you on the page, uh, on the video here, and you'll see information as well. Now, the idea of this is that you apply a layer of polish on your acrylic quilt surface. So our sewing tables, um, whether we are quilting on a on a so easy table with the inserts um, in it or on your Sweet 16 or on your new Capri. Um, we get a lot of queries about quilters saying, but sometimes it feels like their quilt is stuck on the table and they would like it to glide a bit more easy. Now we have this really, really fun, or, uh, well, it could be fun. I guess it could be fun if you want to make it fun, but really great product called the So Very Smooth polish and you get in your little purple bag your <clears throat> tub of polish excuse me and you get a rag a little rag piece of cloth to apply it and you can see as you'll see I use mine regularly um, and a little buff cloth that's going to um, smooth out the surface and the only thing that you need to do is when you take your coffee break see I use it a lot is you will Put your rag a little bit of the the polish onto your little rag and you're going to apply it on your surface and you don't have to cover it so that the whole surface is green you just need to make sure that you do have polish everywhere now we're not going to go the whole thing just so that you can get an idea and you're going to let that dry so then go and have your coffee and a cup of tea and when you're on your way back just before you start sewing again so now imagine Ta -da, time lapse okay and this is dry you're going to take your little rag that's the soft cloth microfiber cloth and you are just going to buff it so that you make sure that there's no pieces left over and it makes your surface nice and smooth um, sometimes we would even recommend doing a second layer and you will find some more information like i say on their website soverysmooth.com but we have these in our online shop available for you um, you would then just buff that surface and what it does is it makes your fabric glide and it almost creates like a, a air buffer between your surface and your project so that you can get a nice even glide of your quilt you don't have to overlay anything on your your quilt surface no additional sticky stuff or anything like that that you can potentially sew down into your quilt so quilt polish Fun product, great product. We really recommend this for all sit-down quilters, all sit-down machine quilters, where you are working on a surface. And it helps clean up your surface, smooth it out, and you will get a nice even glide with your fabric and quilt on happily.
I hope you are all staying busy during our lockdown. None of our quilters should have any excuse for not being able to ski busy. And even with those husbands that's bored, you know, drag them in, rope them in, let them sort your stash or iron some pieces or make masks if that's what you're inclined to do. Happy quilting! technical tip for you today regarding the lights on your Avante. Um, this one is especially for Margaret because she was laughing with me in the week and saying we're always so serious and uh, often you can only see our hands, we are headless. So this one Margaret, it's for you and the real reason why you're not seeing any more of me is because I'm still in my pajamas. It's lockdown and nobody cares. Alright, so regarding the lights, these are on the Avantes and the Fusions, so the older machines, you've got the LED lights, the white lights and the uh, UV lights, the black lights, underneath your handlebars. So the white lights have four little yellow looking LED lights on them, the UV lights have little bobbly glass points to them, there's three of those, so you can see there's two on this side, two on that side of the, the the UV lights and you've got six sets of white lights on both sides of um, the Avante. So over time you may find that some of those lights start uh, to stop working, start to stop, there you go, um, but you can just replace them. They are very easy to do and you can order the white lights, you can order them separately or you can order like a replacement pack that has some white lights and some of the UV lights. All you need to do is very carefully go in behind the light and just pull it out. It is a little tight. Okay, and you'll see it's got three pins on it. So you just take the new one out of the packet and align the pins correctly with the board behind. You can only put it in basically in one direction. And just gently slot it back in and you'll be good to go. You'll have your bright full lights again and you'll be seeing exactly what you want to see. All our events will carry on as normal as soon as we have the go-ahead from government. More information will be on our website, handyquarterSA.com.